Are you deciding whether or not to get Frostpunk 2? Well, hey guys, I'm Rob and I'm here with the Game House to give you five reasons why you need to go out and start playing Frostpunk 2. Before we dive in, I'm going to give you guys a quick disclaimer. If you haven't played the first game, you should go and play the first game. It's on sale right now, at least as of the release of Frostpunk 2, and it's going to be on sale probably a lot more now with the second game coming out. The other thing is going to be, if you don't want spoilers from the first game, then you should probably skip this one and go watch something else. With that in mind, let's jump into the five reasons why you need to be playing Frostpunk 2. The first one's going to be a basic one. It's the type of game, right? Meaning, do you love city builders? Do you love resource managers? And do you like a little bit of politics thrown in there as well? Well, Frostpunk 2 actually has a ton of politics. And I am going to be honest with you, it is one of the best immersions, or I don't know if you want to call it that, but at least a blending of all of those different things. And it takes a really big step from the first game in terms of the politics it's not just two factions you're worrying about it's multiple different factions trying to balance what they want based on what's going to help you build your city out uh, and potentially even do more than that as well also this game does expand based on what you want to do so if you want to just build this super metropolis then you can do that or if you want to go and expand and check out more of this frozen wasteland in frostpunk you're able to do that now as well and for city builders that's something pretty unique where you get the option to be more expansive or to really focus and that's something that i think a lot of you know people who love city builders are going to love about this game the second reason is going to be the aesthetics of the game or the scenery the style the art style whatever you want to call it but this game is beautifully crafted in terms of the fact that you just feel like you're in a frozen wasteland and instead of it being impending doom that you can feel all around you in the first game this time the impending doom feels all around you in a very different way because the game is so much bigger than its original counterpart almost every single scene is going to have its own cutscene or you know whatever's happening with the council or just the people in general they have their own art similarly to how they did in the first game but this time again it, it gives a little bit more of a 3d feel and then just the overall look of the city is so punky i guess is the way i would put it um just in the sense that every time that you are you know doing a steampunk type of game this one fits that aesthetic but also adds the frost in such an amazing way it's almost hard to describe it unless if you're in the game and playing so uh that's the easy way to describe reason number two while you may be deciding whether or not you want to buy or play this game we hope you will decide to like and subscribe for more awesome sports esports and gaming content at the game house but with that let's get back to your video the third reason is going to be for the story, specifically if you want to know what happened after Frostpunk 1. I can't really say that I would necessarily suggest it if you haven't played the first one. You definitely can. They give you a decent bit of background and you could very easily play this second game because it does feel like an almost entirely different game, at least in terms of the gameplay itself. But the story is so much deeper this time and it's again i keep using the word expansive but it really is so much different than the first game where it felt like every little life mattered this time it feels more like the groups matter the overall whole of the city matters and you're trying to find this next step because the captain is dead they basically say that right at the very beginning so hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler for anybody and you're stepping into this new role as the leader and the steward is a very interesting character because you're not even necessarily sure as to what you need to do or if the people are going to support you or not right off the bat. So if you really want a really deep story and trying to figure out what happened to everything else after Frostpunk 1, this is the right game for you. Coming in for our fourth reason is going to be the price. There's no doubt about it. A lot of games nowadays are 70 plus dollars, even if they don't feel like there's a lot to them this one is extraordinarily different there's so much to do in frostpunk not just the story this time and not even just the dlc that's going to be coming later but 
even the free play, the Utopia, allows you to do so much more than you could in the first game. It, it really gives you this feeling of having a sandbox mode in Frostpunk that you've never had before. And I think that adds so much depth. And right now, at least in the United States, it's about $45. Uh, and if you want to get the premium deluxe or whatever edition it's an extra 20 bucks or so but you're getting all of the dlc with that as well which those generally come in at about ten dollars so overall for the price of a normal game nowadays it's seventy dollars um you're gonna be getting three different dlc along with the actual game itself and even just the base price point of 45 dollars there's no doubt that you're going to get at least 40 to 45 hours worth if you're trying to 100% the game. And even if you're not, I think you can easily put 20 to 25 hours in this game. And as I stated at the very beginning of this portion, most games at $70 plus do not even give you that much content. Whereas Frostpunk 2 is giving you that much and more. My last reason is gonna be the thrills and you're gonna be on the edge of your seat the entirety of Frostpunk 2, similarly to how you were in the first game. And I don't think a lot of city builders do that, at least not effectively. While you'll be, you know, hoping not to get raided in some game or worrying that you may run out of resources, this game, every single thing feels like the impact is just exponentially bigger and it's not just the expansive reasons like I've been saying in the other ones I think Frostpunk 2 does a great job at making you feel like every single choice matters because not only are you going to be upsetting different factions but it may cause hundreds of people to die not just one or two like in some of the other you know different city builder type games and they weave it into the story and the resource building so well that Every single time a new story comes up, it's going to help you decide what to do with the limited amount of resources that you have. The decisions that you need to make on whether you do need to go out into the Frostlands more, or whether or not you need to hunker down and get ready for the next Whiteout. Uh, and even that impending doom of the Whiteout really brings the throw level to a max as you try to get as much food and heat and everything else as you possibly can. Uh, and it adds such a different layer than so many other city builders and it's probably maybe the number one reason outside of the story overall as to why i would recommend frostpunk 2. well if you've made it this far hopefully you are going to go out and give frostpunk 2 a try and if not let us know in the comment section why what is it missing for you or maybe are you just not a big city builder type of person let us know, like I said, in the comment section below, and make sure to like and subscribe as we're going to continue to put out great Frostpunk content and so many other games and sports over here at the Game House.